Vitamin C Induced Oxalate Nephropathy, a case report. Yo, what's up? It's someone that's no one, and welcome back to today's report. Today we have a case report from Harmi Gurn, MD, Muhammad Ali Sheta, MD, Noel Novira, MD, and Alec Tunkel, MD, PhD. Where they covered the substance vitamin C. And here's the full report details. Alright, welcome to a vitamin C report. You may be like, alright bro, really? We're covering vitamins now? Well of course guys, we have to cover everything. Come on now. But for real, I did want to cover vitamin C in some way, because sometimes it will come up in reports. Maybe an extract, maybe it's grapefruit juice or something, but vitamin C could in theory help potentiate some substances, making them stronger. So I figured, let's see what it could be like just by itself. And while there isn't any psychoactive effects, it very well could be a hazard if taken too much. This report shows a case of vitamin C overuse for a month straight, leading to kidney failure. And this report breaks it all down really well and highlights that, yeah, even if it's an essential vitamin we need, too much of anything is no good. So with that, I'm sure you'll enjoy this. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. Therapeutic benefits of vitamin C is an area of active research, and large doses have been suggested by many studies for treatment of various conditions. We are describing a case of oxalate nephropathy leading to end-stage kidney disease, which occurs secondary to megadose of oral vitamin C. Increasing the awareness between medical personnel as well as patients will clearly decrease the incidence of this debilitating, but at the same time, highly preventable disease. Vitamin C is an essential water-soluble vitamin. Dietary reference intake, DRI, for vitamin C is 75 mg per day for most adults. Up to 2 grams per day can be tolerated orally. However, larger doses of vitamin C have been utilized for treatment of various conditions. A recent study recommended 84 mg per day of oral vitamin C to reduce symptoms, duration, and frequency of the common cold. In a meta-analysis, a 500 mg daily dose was found to be effective in lowering the serum concentrations of low-density lipoprotein cholesterol and triglycerides. Choi et al. prospectively studied the relation between vitamin C and incident of gouts over 20 years, and found that higher vitamin C intake was independently associated with a lower risk of gout. In addition, several other studies suggested a role for vitamin C in both prophylaxis and treatment of some malignancies. Unfortunately, ingestion of large doses of vitamin C may be associated with adverse events. Here we describe a case of oxalate nephropathy secondary to ingestion of excessive doses of oral vitamin C. Case Report A 58-year-old woman with a history of stable celiac disease since infancy presented with a 5-week history of generalized weakness, reduced appetite, and halitosis described as an ammonia-like smell. She had no urinary complaints. Blood work revealed a BUN of 120 mg per deciliter and creatine of 9.1 mg per deciliter. Routine blood work, including tests of renal function done three months earlier, was normal. On physical examination, her vital signs were temperature, 98.9 degrees Fahrenheit, radio pulse of 70 per minute, Blood pressure in right arm in supine position was 123 over 76 milliliters of mercury, respiratory rate of 18 breaths per minute, and SpO2 of 100% on room air. She had no orthostatic hypotension, and the remainder of the physical examination was normal. An arterial blood gas taken while the patient breathed ambient air showed a pH of 7.45, pCO2 28 milliliters of mercury, PO2, 113 milliliters of mercury, HCO3, 20 millimoles per liter. Her serum chemistries revealed sodium of 138 milliequivalents per liter, potassium of 3.9 milliequivalents per liter, 
chloride of 95 mil equivalents per liter and bicarbonate of 24 mil equivalents per liter. Her urine analysis revealed trace protein of 6 to 10 RBCs per high power field, WBCs 0 to 5 per high power field, but was positive for encenophils. Her urine culture did not show any significant bacteriorrhea. The calculated fractional excretion of sodium was 3.51, with a serum and urine anion gap of 19 and 35, respectively. The patient did not show any significant response to supportive measures, and therefore underwent hemodialysis. A renal ultrasound showed increased renal parenchyma echogenicity. Kidney size was adequate bilaterally. Serum anti-glomular basement membrane antibody C anca and P anca were negative. Anti double stranded DNA and hepatitis serologies were negative, and serum complement concentrations were normal. She was also negative for any evidence of secretary myeloma. The patient underwent a kidney biopsy, which revealed severe oxalate nephropathy with tubular atrophy and interstitial fibrosis. Figure 1 and 2a b. The electron microscopy also confirmed the tubular injury with oxalate crystals. Figure 1. h and &E slide showing multiple tubular distension by a clear crystalline material with mild to moderate mononuclear inflammation. Figure 2. Polarized oxalate in tubules, A and B. Upon further questioning, the patient denied use of any ethylene glycol products. However, she omitted the use of highly concentrated powder of vitamin C, which contained 814 mg of vitamin C and 100 mg of calcium ascorbate, and a quarter of a teaspoon. She was taking 1 to 2 teaspoons of this highly concentrated powder daily for approximately 1 month, accounting for an approximate daily consumption of 3 to 6.5 grams of vitamin C. After almost one year of follow-up and no further ingestion of vitamin C, she remains hemodialysis dependent and is being currently evaluated for renal transplantation. Discussion Oxalate nephropathy is characterized by tubular crystalline deposits of calcium oxalate leading to acute and chronic tubular injury, interstitial fibrosis, and progressive renal insufficiency. In one study, Oxalate deposition was recognized in 1% of native kidney biopsies. In another review of 100 renal biopsies performed at Columbia University, oxalate nephropathy was found to be the etiology of acute kidney injury in 2.1% of elderly patients. Hyperoxaluria is either primary or secondary. There are three recognized types of primary hyperoxaluria. pH Type 1 is due to defects in the gene that encodes the hepatic peroxymal enzyme alanine glyosylate aminotransferase, AGT. Type 2 is due to defects in the gene that encodes the cytosolic enzyme glyosylate reductase slash hydroxypyruvate reductase, GRHPR. And type 3 is due to mutations in the uncharacterized gene DHDPSO. Secondary hyperoxaluria results from increased absorption in patients with intestinal malabsorption syndromes, direct dietary consumption of oxalate-rich products, or ingestion of other substances, e.g. vitamin C, which may be metabolized into oxalate. Vitamin C, adsorbic acid, ascorbate, is an essential micronutrient involved in many biologic and biochemical functions. Unlike plants and most of animals, humans cannot synthesize vitamin C because they lack the enzyme L-gunanolactone oxidase. Oral bioavailability in doses up to 200 mg is 100%, but declines markedly at intakes greater than 1 gram. The reduced form of vitamin C is absorbed in the upper ileum by the atom-sodium-dependent process involving specific vitamin C transporters. However, the oxidized form of the vitamin is transported by facilitated diffusion glucose transporters, GLUT1, 3, and 4. In the renal glomeruli, vitamin C is filtrated freely and actively reabsorbed by the renal tubules, and the factor which limits this reabsorptive process is the existence of a maximal rate. 
Also, vitamin C is catabolized to oxalic acid, which is urinary excreted. The multiple potential benefits, lack of studies discussing the potential adverse effects of large doses, and the availability of vitamin C over the counter are the main reasons behind this inappropriate use of vitamin C. In a survey done during the annual meeting of the Complementary and Alternate Medicine in 2006, 172 practitioners administered intravenous vitamin C to 11,233 patients. The average dose was 28 grams every 4 days, with 22 total treatments per patient. On the other hand, several case reports describe oxalate nephropathy complicated by kidney injury in much lower doses than the tolerable upper intake level, 2 grams per day. As a result of our observation, cautious use of vitamin C should be considered irrespective of baseline renal function. Conclusion In spite of multiple potential benefits of vitamin C, we strongly recommend cautious use of large doses of vitamin C irrespective of baseline renal status. We believe that oxalate nephropathy, secondary to vitamin C, can be prevented by increasing the awareness between physicians as well as patients.